In today's video, we're checking out the extrude function in Fusion 360. Extruding is one of the most often used tools within 3D modeling, and in today's video, we're going to talk all about it. Sounds boring, and it kind of is, but I guarantee you're going to learn something in this video. Let's get started. <laughs> How's it going guys, Angus here from Makers Muse and welcome back to another CAD for Newbies video in Fusion 360. In previous videos we touched on using dimensions in sketches as well as constraints, but in today's video we're going to discuss the most used feature by far in 3D modeling and that is extruding. So what is extruding, how does it work and how can you use it within Fusion 360? Well, let's start with a sketch. So what I have here is a sketch, really really simple, it's just a circle dimensioned out to 60 millimeters. And I'm going to make sure you can see that right there. So this circle exists in 2D space. There is no thickness to it. There's no uh, body to it. It's, it's nothing more than just a flat 2D circle. But using the extrude function, we can give this circle body. So to do an extrude, you hit uh, extrude here up on the top left. Or you can hit E. E is the hotkey in Fusion 360 to fire up the extrude uh, feature. E. So if you're doing lots of extrudes, which you probably will be doing, it's pretty easy to access it that way. So to do an extrude, you need to select your profile. And the profile, think about it like when you buy aluminium or aluminum for you guys in the States. When you buy profiles of that metal, it has a certain shape to it. If you look at the end, you just cut it square off. You might have round section or square section or even crazy sections that are used in all sorts of specific applications. That's what our profile is in this circumstance. So, we're going to select the circle. And like those extrudes, we're going to now give it thickness by grabbing that profile and pulling it in one direction. And that's at its basic, most basic form, this is an extrude. We can give it a certain depth, distance, so let's say 60. And there we go. We now have a solid object formed from our circle. But let's go through the next type of extrude, an extrude cut. Now this is often called a cut extrude and has its own tool set in other software, but in Fusion it is built into the same extrude function. So if you're coming from something like SolidWorks, which I came from, a SolidWorks background, you did an extrude cut. In, so in Fusion, you do an extrude and then you mark it as a cut. So to demonstrate, I'm going to click this top face and create a sketch. I'm just going to do a random 2D sketch on this top face, stop sketch. And I'm going to do extrude again, and I'm going to select my profile. Now I can select, you see Fusion's intelligent. I've enclosed that sketch, which you need to do to create an enclosed profile. It's intelligent and in highlighting which profile I want. Do I want the outside or the inside? So in this case, I do want the inside. And you'll notice if I pull up, Fusion's intelligently making it a join, and it's making it an extrude function. But if I pull it down, it's intelligently making it a cut. So an extrude cut removes material away from your 3D model. And similarly, just as before, we can enter a, a dimension. So minus 30, for example, will extrude cut 30 millimeters into our shape, just like so. Now, before I hit OK, there is a few other functions we can do to our extrude. Let's drop down the menu. So we have a start, uh, start modifier. So this will either go from the plane we created our sketch on, or we can offset it to a different area, or we can also mark from object. Now, this means basically we can actually start this extrude from where we where we drew the sketch, or we can offset it a certain amount. For example, if I wanted to start inside the shape for some reason, I can enter a dimension, for example, uh, in this case, minus three, not three. Always get that wrong. Minus three, there you go. So now it's starting our sketch, as you can see, it's starting our extrude cut, three millimeters into the shape. Or for example, we can have from objects. So for example, if we had another object that we're extruding, that the extrude is starting from, we can actually select that. In this case, selecting the object we've got here actually doesn't change anything because it's already starting from the surface of that. But that's something to keep in mind. I don't use that very often though, I'll be completely honest. And then we have direction as well. So direction is really important. We have one side, two side or symmetric. So that means when you have the sketch, you can extrude one direction, or two directions in different amounts, or symmetrically the same amount in both ways. So for example, if we were now doing a, a uh, regular extrude, a join, and we'll say we were coming up 20 millimeters, we could say the other direction down here, we wanted to also pull it through something. 
So in this shape, it doesn't make much sense at all to do this, but there'll definitely be cases when you're 3D modeling where you want to extrude two directions, especially if you're in between two objects and you want to extrude out to both of them. In those circumstances, you might even do a symmetric extrude. So in the case of a symmetric extrude, it'll extrude from both directions where the sketch originated by as much as the amount you enter. Now, a quirk in Fusion 360, and it's really important to note, is the join operation. So, if I turn back on my cylinder and I hit OK, this extrude is now bonded to this cylinder. It's now the one thing, it's part of it. However, if I right click at my feature tree, edit feature, and then I go and decide to hide my cylinder, even with join on, and hit OK, and then unhide my cylinder. You notice that line isn't there? These are no longer, these aren't joined. They're separate bodies. And you can separate them, you can select them separately on the uh, body drop down menu here on the left hand side. Which is important to remember if you're trying to make something extrude and join into some things but not others. Because going back to our extrude function, right click, edit feature, you can always go back and undo and change. Instead of doing join, you can see it automatically updated to new body. There was nothing joining to join to, it did new body. So if you have things visible, but you don't want them to join, do new body. But if you do want it to join to some things, not others, hide the things you don't want your extrude to join to. Hope that made some sense. So example there, new body. Now another function not many of you will probably ever use, but it does come in handy, is the taper angle. So if you're designing for Thank you very much, Cetus. Thank you for that little note. <laughs> if you're designing for injection molding or vacuum forming or any process that needs to pull out of a mold or cavity, you need taper angle. Well, you can put that into your extrude as well. So for example, taper angle five. Notice something instantly wrong there. It's tapering the wrong direction. You may want that for your design if you're designing a diamond or something. But for example, with this, we'll enter negative five and it tapers back down. So there is obviously a, a limit to as much tape to the amount of taper you can incorporate. If you did something like 30, um, it's going to fail in some directions. Let's do, let's say, yeah, see a little warning popped up. Let's do minus 15, for example. Okay, minus 15 doesn't work. Let's do minus 10 then. Minus 10 does. So you notice it's uh, getting confused because once it gets to a certain taper, those faces start crossing over and intersecting each other. It doesn't like that. So you can do taper angles, but keep in mind the geometry. Now, another form of operation you can do with your extrude is an intersect. Intersects can be incredibly powerful. Let me demonstrate. So I'm not going to do it with this shape. I'm actually going to just roll forwards. So what I have here is a sketch plane right here that has been offset from my uh, center sketch plane. The uh, which one was it? I can right click to find out. Edit feature. So it was offset from... I believe the front, yeah, that's right, the front plane here. I really don't like how Fusion lets you select planes. I'll just hide the body. So it was offset from this plane here. Very difficult to see in Fusion by the default colors, just, just to give you a warning. So that's an offset plane. So I've done a sketch on that plane, which is this sketch here. So what I'm going to do with this sketch is do another extrude and pull it into this shape. But what I'm going to do Instead of a cut or a join, I'm going to do intersect, right? So what an intersect does is it takes the intersecting boundaries between those two functions, between that, between that body and the extrude function, and creates a remaining shape, which in case is this. You've got the curve from the cylinder, but you've got the profile uh, of our sketch, which can be very powerful for cutting out detailed objects using multiple curves and compound angles and all sorts of crazy stuff. That can be very powerful. Again, I rarely use it, but it can be extremely useful. But there is one final way you can alter your extrudes in a way that I use all the time. And for some of you, you're gonna find this extremely useful. Okay, let me demonstrate. So, operation, cut. Okay, so let's say this is a shape, a logo, for example, you want to push onto this cylinder, but you want to cut in a uniform amount around the curve. You don't want it, for example, to cut in by, you know, a set amount, like maybe that much, because look, it's cutting in differently on different sides. That's not what we want. We want it to cut it in, cut in the same amount. Well, we can do that actually quite simply 
by changing our extents. So for this sketch, we want to collect, uh, select two object and select our cylinder. And then we want to change which, uh, which type of solution we want. So to the end of it, that's the extent of the shape or to the, the start of it where it first intersects it, we want the start. And then we want to either uh, chain faces or extend faces. Now this is where things get confusing. Depending on your model, you may want to change between these two. It's usually trial and error for me, I'll be completely honest. But we want to change our offset now. So let's offset it by two millimeters. There we go. So for example, you see in this case, it doesn't make any difference between chain or extend. In some cases it will for your model, but we want to make it in the minimum solution. It's the first face of the cylinder it inter interacts with, it interfaces with. And okay. So what this has done is it's created our sketch and pushed it into the cylinder by a uniform amount. That's a curved face. That's a curved face. It's gone in by two millimeters. And this will work on compound curves. It will work on 3D, 3D shapes, which are created using uh, lofts, which I'll talk about in future videos. This will work. Now it's not as powerful as the wrap feature that, Fusion, uh, that SolidWorks has, for example, with text it will start distorting towards the edge. Uh, wrap will actually do intelligent wrapping with text. This is not as powerful as that, at least yet, but it is very useful for doing this kind of detailing on a curved surface. So that's, that's extrudes guides. Uh, as you can see, it's a very simple and you know, basic function at its heart, but you can do some pretty complicated things with it. And most 3D models will be made up mostly of extrudes. Actually, in most cases, you can get away with only using extrudes. It might use a few extra steps, but extrudes are extremely powerful. So thank you so much for watching, guys. Hope you found this video on extrudes within Fusion 360 useful, and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future 3D printing tips, tricks, and reviews, and future 3D printing for newbies videos here on Makers Muse. My name's Angus, and I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later, guys. Bye. He has placed satellites into water.